First, national insurance. I've long thought that the NHS is the black hole of public spending. It sucks in everything and nothing escapes. It needs reform and it needs challenging. But right now, I'm told it needs money. It has, of course, done sterling work during the pandemic, but at the cost of horrendous waiting lists in virtually every other area of medical activity, from cancer to transplants. In his budget last year, knowing what was coming down the track, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak decreed a 1.05% rise in national insurance for this year. Workers and employers kicks in in April to raise £12 billion for the NHS and, as I said a moment ago, at some distant point in the future, social care. But what's now developed beyond the debate over the needs of the NHS is a fascinating political argument, not so much about the £12 billion as about whether national insurance or some other means of raising money is the best way to do it. Now, the Tory right and left are unusually agreed that NI isn't the best way forward. Two folk that I count as friends and politicians of some wisdom, Robert Halfen and John Redwood, agree that it's not the way to proceed. Robert, who's what they call a blue-collar Tory, a working-class man who really should vote Labour but doesn't, says a rise in national insurance will hit the poor hardest. He argues instead for a rise in capital gains tax, a, a levy on businesses, or even pushing some of the money saved from cutting overseas aid towards the NHS. Sir John, a traditional right-winger, says the rise in national insurance isn't needed because the economy is growing faster than expected and borrowing was much lower than expected in December, some £13 billion. So if the NHS does need more money, John suggests that it can be found elsewhere. Now, the significance of that is that two good men from both wings of the Conservative Party agree a straight rise in NI isn't a clever move. Add to that the small matter of both the Prime Minister and his party plumbing low levels in the opinion polls that are usually associated with an imminent departure and there is much food for thought. It seems to me the consensus that whatever finally comes of Partygate and the rest of it, and if the Prime Minister survives, a new battle plan is required and scraping or delay, scrapping or delaying the national insurance rise is on the agenda. Ministers are rolled out to defend the rise and say it will happen, but they yet may prove to be the full guys and gals in a bigger game. Save the NHS, save Boris Johnson. So today we're asking first if the NHS needs the money, why it needs it, what it would spend it on, and if there should be conditions attached to it. But we're also asking if all it tells you is really more about the state of the Conservative Party than the NHS. Lord Frost mentioned his opposition to a rise in NI, indeed any rise in taxation, when he resigned from the Cabinet. Mel Stride, the Conservative chairman of the Treasury Select Committee, is also against it. And David Davis, the Conservative MP who famously said to Boris Johnson, for God's sake, go, is in the opposition camp too. As the Times' leading article says today, and I quote, a battle is underway to define what it means to be a Conservative.